I'm serious. I know that you think you are. What are we talking about? Gay people are magic. Mm. Nope. Come on! <laughs> Just look. This is for the record. Write it down. Uh, we are four white straight people who are going to be talking about sexism, racism, and homophobia. Okay, we are less qualified than a lampshade made of toilet paper. I don't know. Katie's a woman. Dan is, if anything, a genderless Lego man. And I view sex as a constantly evolving spectrum. All right, well, that's better, I guess. So, racism in movies, like how all our enemies used to be Russian and now they're all vaguely Middle Eastern? Uh, not quite so direct as that. Uh, yes, Hollywood is still trying to force stereotypes down our throat, but it's not racist in the old school negative sort of way. It's more well-meaning than that. It's a white guilt thing. Yeah, it's like that magical black character that's been around for so long. I mean, Hollywood was so worried about being perceived as racist that they created this weird stereotype that all old black people are like full of folksy wisdom and just perfect advice. Advice that they selflessly dole out to the dumb white protagonist. Shepard from Firefly. Most of the characters that Morgan Freeman's ever played. That's goddamn right. Moses, Hudsucker Proxy. There was a period in the 90s where almost every single wise down-to-earth judge was an old black man. And sometimes they were actually magic, like in Legend of Bagger Vance or the Green Mile. And speaking of that thing I said, now it's gay people who are magic. That's Hollywood's new thing. Is this a Dumbledore jab? Previously, gay people were only clowns in shows. Hollywood in The Mannequin, Jack and Will and Grace, Snagglepuss, just all mincing around, all, isn't it funny I'm gay? But now, if there's a gay character in a supporting role in a TV show or movie, nine times out of ten, Hollywood makes him an expert. Harvey Firestein, in that Simpsons episode where Homer gets hair, we know two things about that character. One, he is incredibly gay. And two, he's like super insightful about absolutely everything. Hollywood wants to show that they're not homophobic, but they overcompensate by making gay people infallible. Wallace is the gay roommate in Scott Pilgrim with perfect relationship and dating advice. You got Powder from Powder, Angel in Rent. Kurt on Glee? Probably, I mean, right? Hollywood wants to appear staunchly pro-gay, but they're still not comfortable with showing gay couples actually, you know, being intimate. Even on Modern Family, which has one of the most balanced and realistic gay couples on television, still waited an entire season before airing an episode where their gay, married couple kissed. And even then, it was just a peck. Yeah, but you're acting like Hollywood has just moved on to homosexuality, like it doesn't still have a huge problem with race. When was the last time you watched a movie where a black man ended up with a white woman? Guess who's coming to dinner? They actually uh, remade that movie and recast Sidney Poitier's character with Ashton Kutcher. No. I see the reverse all the time. Zach Braff can date a black girl on Scrubs. The only black friend on Friends can date both Ross and Joey. But Will Smith can't end up with a white woman. He does in Men in Black. Nah, uh, Agent J and more woman. They're romantically tied, but you never even see them kiss. And then in Men in Black 2, you know that they broke up because that's when he falls for Rosario Dawson. Because Hollywood is still totally cool with a black man ending up with a Latina woman. Like Ava Mendez and Will Smith in Hitch. Or Denzel Washington and Ava Mendez again in Training Day, huh? Or Will Smith and, wow, Rosario Dawson again in Seven Pounds. Unless you're making a point about race, white women cannot be with black men. In movies. You know what else white women can't do? Jump. Jump. Get shot in the head. Ugh. I just walked away, Swan. Yeah, guys get shot in the head in movies all the time. I mean, there's brain splatter, blood, and everything. It's the best. I mean, that exact thing happens four times in The Departed Alone. Yeah, it happens all the time, but never with women. Sure, you get a woman with like a bullet hole in her forehead, but brain splatter? Nope, not in America. Good, right? I don't want to see a guy's brain splatter out of his head. Nobody does. There's brain splatter, blood, and everything. It's the best. The point is, there's an inequality. I mean, Hollywood likes to pretend that there are just as many great roles out there for women as there are for men, but as long as we're okay with watching a man's brains poop out of the back of his head and not a woman's, then we're still implicitly saying that women are more precious or need to be handled with, like, kids' gloves. There's this YouTube video called 100 Movies, 100 Headshots, and there are only two female victims in it. Oh my god, why did you dig that clip up? Is not having your brains poop out the back of your head a stereotype? I feel like we moved on 
on to a more general Hollywood slash life sucks motif. I can get us back on track. And when I do, you're all going to want to give me a hand. Is that a smug call ahead joke to a reference you haven't made yet? Sometimes I forget. You aren't all figments of my imagination. Uh, but if you want to talk about strange and bizarrely specific stereotypes in Hollywood, you've got to talk about handedness. You just gotta. Because you said we had to. Almost all modern protagonists are right-handed, but the antagonists, or failing that, sneaky, goofy side characters are left-handed. How do you know that? Are you so crazy that you keep track of which hand movie characters write their names with? Nope. That would have been easier. I've been studying hair parts. Hair parts. Protagonists will part from the left to the right, as if they've used their right hand to drag their hair, if they had any, from the left side to the right. Goofballs, on the other hand, Go this side. Okay, so we can just take his word for this, right? There's no need yeah. to name a bunch cool of Cool and powerful Don Draper parts his hair like a right-handed man. Sniveling Weasley Pete Campbell like a left-handed man. Hugh Jackman in Prisoners, right-handed. Creepy Paul Dano, left-handed. Even <gasps> Superman parts his hair like a right-handed guy, but when he puts on his glasses and becomes worthless Clark Kent, the part switches too and suddenly he's left-handed. Hell, Tom Cruise was born left-handed in real life. But whenever he's playing the protagonist, he does everything with his right hand. Shooting a gun in Mission Impossible. Flipping bottles in Cocktail. Wielding a sword in The Last Samurai. He plays pool with his left hand in The Color of Money. Only because Paul Newman is the real hero of that movie. Tom Cruise is the weasel who cons Newman out of money. You would make a great detective if your cases involve finding answers that literally nobody cared about. Ah, case in motherfucking point. What hand do you write with? Lefty. And you, Soren? Right. Obviously. The one named after being correct. Wait, what? I don't see what that... If anything, that disproves you. Wait, Soren is the protagonist? I'm the goofball in my own life? Just don't. We all thought you knew. What if you do, what if you do lots of, what if you do sex stuff with your right hand? Like I write with my left hand, but I mean, all sex stuff is right all the way. That's gotta count for something. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Make sure you Watch our other videos and subscribe if you want to find out, if you, not find out, if you want to tell us what the next episode should be about, write it in the comments. Don't do that. We're not we going to do that. Do that. We wouldn't. The next episode's already You written. don't know what you're doing. Has we do. been shot. I mean, we, you have no power in this Professionals, we situation. know what we're doing. You are just, you're here to watch Thanks it. Thanks for watching. Just actually...